Thanks so much for tuning in today for part two of Power 101, uh, the intro course to women's styles of powwow dance and all that goes into it um, because what we see on the dance floor is only the tip of the iceberg and there's a lot more to it. So thank you for your time today sitting down and joining and I hope you enjoy learning about fancy shell dancing and uh, stay tuned for part three where we're going to get into some footwork and learning into a routine. Learning a routine. Ish nish ai hai. Okay, so we know uh, traditional and went to jingle. We know the stories of the origin of those and now we've gone to fancy. I'm playing a live song from the group Bear Hill in the background there. Not so sure you can hear it. So I've now unpinned my fancy shawl. Lots of beautiful ribbon work and designs. And I've got my fringe on my ribbon. So this would go under my cape, but uh, fancy dancers will have something heavier than a cook and scarf. So I'm grabbing it right by the ribbons, making a tail, holding it up here. So we know that this evolved from traditional women's dancing of wearing a tea dress to having it on our arm. And you hear how that beat is really fast. And so some of the moves I was told were inspired by like the Charleston, like old style, which you can't see right now. But next time <laughs> I will have the camera set up so that you can see footwork. But this one, it went from a dress to the arm to onto our backs here. And I was told too that we are trying to imitate we're trying to imitate a beautiful butterfly. We're trying to imitate a beautiful butterfly with the colors and the movements and being really delicate with our feet on the ground and graceful. And so that's women's fancy shawl and those are the stories of all three. So it's really important to ask yourself, why do I want to dance? What do I want to emulate? What's the message I want to send? What sort of prayers do I want to make? Which story do I connect with the most? And a lot of people are picking styles based on which one they like the look of the best. But when I teach my, um, my elementary girls and stuff, I like to remind them. I like to talk about all the time, why are we dance? So are we dancing for healing? Are we dancing for prayers for our family or Mother Earth? And are we taking care, you know? It's really cool to have really nice, pretty regalia that takes a long time to earn or a long time to make or lots and lots of money to buy, are we taking care of it? That's kind of what I wanted to talk about uh, next here was caring for our regalia. We talked about keeping it off of the floor, doing our best not to get it wet, but when we dance outside, once we start dancing, we technically aren't supposed to stop until the beat stops. Just getting this. set up here okay so here I have my smudge box and I have some medicines some different medicines that are used for smudging so smudging is for cleansing and for protection so sometimes when we dance there can be different medicines on the ground there can be good and bad medicines at Powell's, so we have to make sure that we are cleansing and um, preparing, protecting our stuff. So this is sweet grass. Um, this, I was told, is a men's medicine. Uh, can be used by anybody, but is is typically the carrier for uh, protection. Got some matches here. I was told that if you're going to smudge something, you're not supposed to use a lighter. You're supposed to do your best to use something uh, matte or something natural. This is buffalo sage that was gifted to me by a very honorable square woman uh, here in Edmonton who is a friend. Um, she's a singer. 
It's called uh, Buffalo Sage. It's women's medicine because it is seeding here. You can see that it's seeding and it's, um, it's reproducing essentially. And so that reproduction, that life giving is something that is carried and held by the women. So this is my Buffalo Sage. And this, I just have some live power going, or some, yeah, some power music going in the background there. This is California White Sage. I picked this down by Blood, or Guyana First Nation, down in Treaty 7 here in Alberta. It smells so amazing. So there's those, and there's other things that can be smudged with, like fungus. Um... And uh, yeah, those are the, some of the medicines that different nations use. Um, I myself, these are the ones that I use. So when I am caring for, preparing to dance, preparing to teach, um, preparing to have people, uh, if there's gonna be people touching my regalia. So a protocol is that um, you're keeping drugs and, or you know, illicit substances and alcohol away from all your regalia. So where you're keeping it, um, feathers and plumes should be stored really way up high on shelves. Um, again, not touching the ground. If you have, if you know your regalia is in a certain room, keep those, those other medicines used for other types of celebrating um, away out of that room completely or out of the space completely. I myself walk the red road, so I'm 100% drug and alcohol free. It's a commitment I've made. Um, to being a dancer, practicing this cultural, traditional way of life, and as well for my mental, my own mental health. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this and pull the leaves down off of the stem. My white California sage. This bee you're hearing is a fast, fancy beat. The older the dance, the typically slower the beat is. So we know the oldest of the women's is traditional, and then it goes jingle, and then fancy shawl. And that's the order um, of procession in the grand entry. So you'll have an arena director calling for different age groups and different categories to say where you're going to be in the grand entry line. Um, so again, if we're going from oldest to newest, we go traditional, we go jingle, we go fancy. So if you didn't know the women's styles, I've probably said it about <laughs> 10 different times, so hopefully you know by now. So I've got this in a, in a nice ball here. I'm going to put it into my smudge box, which was gifted to me. This is a Blackfoot smudge box gifted to me, um, by someone I used to work with down in Treaty 7 territory. So again, I myself, I'm Nakota Sue and, or Stony, and Cree, I am also German Mennonite, so. Thinking those good thoughts when we are smudging ourselves in our regalia, as well as when we're dancing. Again, why are we dancing? What do we want? You got that really, really nice. So I'll smudge um, myself off camera. I just wanted to show you how to care for your regalia. Um, I have the teaching that you are not supposed to record ceremony on camera, um, but this is this is for the sake of protecting our stuff. So if these were off of my hair. I'm gonna dip it in here. We hear our MC making jokes. That always happens, so our awesome otter ties are going in the smoke. I dip them. I like to go clockwise because in my territory, my nations, we do things clockwise. After we move around the sun. I'll take my, my shawl, thinking good thoughts. I want to have those prayers for healing, for medicine, for my community, my family, myself, Mother Earth. 
um, that my regalia carries on for years and years because ideally I, I pass it on, you know, I pass it on to the next generation. This can carry me and allow me to do this good work that I need to do in the community. That I'm honoring that traditional, that traditional Sioux pattern that is on that, that is on that shawl. That is a family pattern. The woman who made it, um, her name's Melissa. She made it with her sisters. So this is something that was really important to them. And I want to honor their family. And I want to dance in a good way and carry myself in a good and respectful way. The last thing I'm going to do for preparation, typically these would be off of my feet, but I'm wearing them because I wanted to show show you in this video today so i've got my moccasins and i'm going to put my feet because i'm going to be stepping stepping on mother earth and dancing dancing on mother earth i want to be cleansed get rid of any negative energy bad medicine any, any sort of injuries any accidents that have happened you know cleansing and I'm preparing my moccasins and my feet to be stepping and dancing on, on Mother Earth in a good way. Um, I was thinking, yeah, I'll take this off. My hair will look funny once I take it off. But... So I, I put this behind, behind the braids so the braids will hold it in place. Taking it out here. I've really got those hide strings. I'm just going to dip it. saying prayers for carrying on these teachings, carry on, carrying on this medicine and this ceremony and wanting all that I share this with to be dancing in a good way and thinking about, you know, why are you dancing? What style do you want to dance? Also the ethics and the protocol of it, you know, keeping those illicit substances away, um, keeping those circles separate. Another big part of how I'll dance is just to be proud. To be a proud Indigenous or First Nations or however you, because typically Métis and Inuit did not practice um, powwows, um, but to be a proud First Nations person, to be a proud First Nations woman, and this was outlawed until the 60s or 70s in Canada or the northern part of Turtle Island, and so we're really trying to reclaim these traditions and get this back to our people. and. Since a lot of our own children still haven't tried it, um, uh, I myself come from a family of addictions and family members and relations who had suffered and, and lost culture, ceremony and uh, parenting skills in residential schools as well as uh, the child welfare system. And so I've had to learn all this on my own and in community and so a lot of our people, for these same reasons in our community, are in institutions and, and jails and all sorts of places like that. And so we are still working on getting all of our own people back to the circle, getting our own people back to this way of life. So with that being said, the ethics of this is that if you are non-Indigenous, you can, you can have these teachings and know these things for yourself. Um, and that if you... I'll be showing steps in uh, some of the videos to come and some some different teachings and things like that. And that you're, f you're free to use those in intertribal. That's the time for everyone to dance. You can come and join and bust it out. This isn't by no means an inv invitation for our non-Indigenous relations or non-First Nations relations. Um, or, yeah, non-Indigenous to be stepping forward, making your own regalia and just jumping in. There is a process. Uh, for initiation that's supposed to happen that I can get into in another video. Um, offerings are supposed to be made. Um, supposed to be finding and presenting protocol to someone to teach you steps and things like that. So there's a lot of different things that should be followed um, to get onto the path. And traditionally, you know, you would go into a lodge and approach elders asking for your colors. Um, doing fasts and doing different offerings and sacrifices to find out what your style is going to be. Some people are asked by their family members, so this is a lot, there's a lot to this, and I'm hoping that, you know, this series will inspire people to have a respect for this ceremony and craft, and um, for some of my Indigenous relations to uh, practice it themselves.
or encourage First Nations people they know to get back, to get back to this way of life, to get back to the circle. Um, but yeah, each niche, I hi, thank you so much for, for listening, and um, I look forward to showing you way more in the coming two videos.